get going. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Let's bring out our amazing cast and executive producers. Please join me in welcoming Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, executive producer of Riverdale. <laughs> our favorite redhead, aside from the Blossom family, KJ Appa. Archie's worldview. He's typically such an optimistic guy, uh, but now his BFF is going to a new school. His dad just got shot. Are we gearing up for Dark Archie? Uh, hundred percent. Uh, like Roberto said, Archie's pretty much freshly dealing with uh, Fred being shot in that first episode. So there's a lot of things going on, and there's like a there's almost a switch that goes off. And I think one hundred percent, it's a, it's a completely different side to Archie that we haven't really seen yet. Um, so yeah, it was. When I read that first episode, I was I was happy because I, I knew that it would be. A, a How are you going to juggle football, music, and your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Omg, it's going to be quite the pickle for you there. Um, I'm really excited to announce that we're getting 22 glorious episodes yeah. in season two. Additional episodes 
episodes shaped the writer's room? Do you have more room to play this year? I think we, it's funny, we thought okay. that we'd have a ton of room to sort of do one-off episodes and sort of like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but there are so many great characters and there's so many stories to tell that it's the same. I think it's just more of that kind of pedal to the metal, aggressive storytelling and juggling all these characters. And what's so fun is seeing different characters interact. And that's one of the things we'll have a chance to do. We're going to see more, we're going to see more of Kevin Keller this year. We're going to see, uh, 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 we're going to see more of Josie. We're going to see more of the Pussy Cats. Uh, uh, and it's going to be, and it's going to be, uh, uh, we're going to be able to do as much crime stuff as we want and then have enough for the characters and the relationships and the romances. So it's, it's really a bigger canvas and that's, that's the best thing. Uh, how you doing, Cole? Are you singling me out right now? <laughs> it's time to talk about Jughead. He's going to a brand new school this year and when we last saw him in the season one finale, he put on a Southside Serpents jacket. Yeah. What's his mindset as he's going into season two? I, I think Jughead for season two is placed kind of in the, the middle of two worlds that are starting to collide and really erupt. And as the uh, sort of as the season has progressed, and it's going to start forcing him to really pick a side, which is quite a dangerous space for him to be in, because he's a very morally gray character. And I think uh, that's going to have huge repercussions for his narrative and, and, and for the, his relationships with the rest of the cast, and we'll see. How's his relationship with Betty going? It also, I mean, it also gets tested. His, his character is now very much the outsider. I mean, he started as a kind of intellectually uh, foreign character at the beginning of season one, and now now he is physically away from the entire cast, which is a, a strange place for him to be in. Well, we saw when he was over at the new high school, he surprisingly was fitting in really well. Do you think that he's going to be embracing the serpents and embracing these new students as kind of like a newfound family? I, I don't think it's going to be as easy as, as he assumes. I, 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 already from what we've been shooting without spoiling too much, he, I think he has an idea of fitting in and he's quite a special snowflake, or he thinks he's quite a special snowflake and he'll stand out. And the problem with, with a dangerous system like Southside High is that standing out can be physically threatening. So we'll, we'll start seeing a little bit of that narrative um, for our poor special snowflake Jughead. <laughs> Uh, and this is a question that Roberta and Sarah can chime in on too. Any word on Juggy's mom and Jellybean making an appearance? Uh, we, 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 we've talked about it. I, I think it might be something that happens in the second half of the season. Yeah. We just we have to find the right casting for both of them. I mean, the casting's everything on this show, so we, we want to do it right. But nobody cares about Bughead, right? <laughs> Nobody. Um, Lily, we saw Betty battling a lot of inner demons in season one. As she goes into season two, are you personally excited to kind of explore that a little bit more and kind of get into her mindset? Yeah, I mean, definitely from an acting perspective, it's uh, a challenge, so it's good to take that on. And I think as the scripts have been coming in and as we've started filming, there's a lot of, I don't know, like last season we saw some dark Betty, but this season it's more like tortured soul Betty. <laughs> and um, it's really, I'm really excited to play it, but also kind of, it's a little heart wrenching for my character and for my sweet little Betty. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's, uh, we, we explore that darkness a lot more and I think uh, we see Betty come to terms with it a little bit more in season two rather than try and just cover it with a black wig. As she's coming to term with this darkness and trying to figure it out, are we going to be seeing her lean more on Jughead, Veronica, or Archie as she goes through this? You know what? I think it's kind of, um, I don't know, I think her dark, I don't know what I can and can't say. Just everything. Like, I you can say everything. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's quite even. I think she finds a different uh, comfort in every single one of them. And, but I do think you definitely see more of Betty and Archie's friendship and their support system and um, 
and that they are, you know, they have been best friends their whole lives, and that's something that you really get to see in season two, which, you know, makes me happy because it just kind of gives a little bit more background to these two people who grew up next to each other. And as much as I love Betty's signature iconic ponytail, are we going to get to see her let her hair down a little bit this I year? Know, I don't know. I don't <laughs> you, you really hit the third rail right now. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, we will see Betty loosen her ponytail a little bit more this season. Yeah, it is, I always say to Lily, I was like, it's iconic, you have to wear a ponytail. And Lily's like, I have a headache from wearing it. <laughs> uh, Camila. <laughs> how very on brand, how very Veronica of you. Um, Hiram's home. We have Mark Consuelos coming on in season two to play your dad. Amazing. First of all, I've got to know, what was it like welcoming him into the Lodge family? It was effortless. Honestly, he blended in as soon as he got here. Um, and he plays the role with such confidence and subtlety. Like, he's not, like, trying to push this Godfather-esque character. Like, he just is so calm and collected. Because at the end of the day, he's a businessman and he knows how to like put on a face and like charm people. But the whole time, I mean, I'm still suspicious. I don't trust him. <laughs> I was gonna say, how would you describe their father-daughter bond? It's layered. I think there's a side of Veronica that really wants to know that he's better now or that he's gonna try to be a good person. But at the same time, he's still doing the same things he's always doing and keeping secrets with Hermione, and they're kind of like not letting Veronica cross that bridge, mm -hmm. and she's just trying to get to them and be like, let me be part of this family. I want to be a watch. Like, I want to help, you know? She wants the secrets. Yeah. KJ, have you shared any scenes with your girlfriend's father? Hermione? No. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we've had a couple scenes. <laughs> have you shared any scenes with, with uh, Mark and Suelos? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's some got some crazy stuff together in season two, yeah, some real <laughs> funny they stuff. They have a really cool relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Really? How would you, how would you describe it? Is um, it tense? Scary it for me. Scary? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, obviously dating his daughter, kind of, he's a bit skeptical with that, but he's a hard man, so mm -hmm. it's good. Uh, and he has uh, a plan. <laughs> Camille, I'm excited to say that we can reveal something very special here. Mm -hmm. There's another man coming back into Veronica's life. Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell the audience? I've got an ex from New York coming. Oh. And he's a bad boy. And he brings, he brings out Veronica's dark side, which I don't think we got to really see Whoa. in season one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Veronica is much darker than Dark Betty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no going back. <laughs> KJ, how does Archie feel about this? Um, at right. this stage, Archie's really not in the right headspace to be dealing with that at all, so you never know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> We've got even more fresh faces coming to Riverdale this year. It was announced that Supergirl star Britt Morgan is going to be coming in as Penny Peabody. And of course, as we mentioned, we've got a brand new Reggie joining the group. Why was Charles Melton the first or the perfect choice to step into Reggie's shoes? You know, we we when we when we were first casting Reggie for season one, it took us forever to find uh, the guy who kind of embodied that, and that was Ross Butler. And then when Ross had to leave, we you know we had to make a really tough decision: do we retire the character, or do we try to try to replace this great actor? And for me, and I think for the producers and for the cast, Reggie's such an important part of the show, and he's such a big element. He's Archie's kind of day-to-day -day rival that I said, listen, if we can find the right actor, we'll do it. If we can't, we'll retire Reggie. And Charles was one of the first actors who came in, and um, he had it tough because since we'd had everyone else cast, we made him read with KJ, we made him read with Cole, we made him read with Ashley for various reasons because he has stories with all three of them. And uh, the chemistry was kind of yeah. instantaneous. As, as soon as I met the guy, you know, the guy was doing push-ups before he went into his audition. Is that, is that the way to your friendship? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's honest, he's perfect for Reggie. Yeah. He completely embodies the character. Yeah, he really is. Is that why you like to play so many pranks on him? 
Uh, not, not on each other. We do it together. We're a bloody good team as well. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm also pleased to announce that there is another new character coming to Riverdale. Tony Topaz. Joining the group, you'll know her from the Archie comics. Sarah, what can you speak to about Tony and who will be playing her? Well, what's interesting is the actress playing her was someone that we met the first year for one of the parts that someone else was playing, and we just loved the actress so much that when the opportunity came up to bring her, she felt like she belonged in Riverdale, so we're very excited. And she's played by Vanessa Morgan, my best friend. How would you describe her character? Where does she fit into this world? She's uh, she, uh, Tony Topaz is a student at Southside High. She is uh, uh, she's a Southside Serpent. Um, um, she's sort of uh, Jughead's guide into the Serpent world, um, and and there's a lot about her that that makes it seem like, almost like we jokingly say that she's got a lot of the same interests as Jughead, so it's almost like she's like a female Jughead. So, so she's trouble. She's trouble. Trouble in what way, Roberto? I, I, I think she's trouble getting Jughead into this gang. I think uh, uh, she might be trouble for Bughead. I don't know, I don't know. Saying, I can hear the boos and hisses in the audience right now. Um, now, the interesting thing about Tony Topaz is that in the comics, it was hinted that she could be bisexual. Sarah, is this something that we're also going to be exploring on the on-screen version? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roberto, do you want to add to that too? Yeah, no. I mean, she's she's sort of um, uh, that's something that's in, that's in the comic books and and has been for a while. Uh, and we thought it would be really really fun to 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 uh, have have a bisexual character from the comics on the show. Uh, so this is going to be trouble for a lot of the people on this panel. <laughs> Which leads us to our romance checkup. Um, I understand that we're getting some new love interests and some new love. Hey, how how you doing down there? I'm what? good. What's going on for Kevin? Uh, Any word on Joaquin? You know, I think Joaquin got on that bus. I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> <out. laughs> Why do I take it? You know, I, I think um, the first few episodes are really fun for Kevin to kind of deal with that heartbreak in a very wonderfully written way by the writers and producers. Um, so it's going to be really fun to... To show that, and then I do think there's going to be a new love interest that comes into play eventually, which you have to ask Roberto about that. <laughs> he, he has to heal his heart first. Yeah, he's a delicate soul, as you guys know. So, <laughs> what do you what do you think that Kevin looks for in a guy? That's right. Uh, Remember, there's children in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think he uh, I, I think Kevin learned a big lesson uh, with Joaquin. Not that he's not going to learn that lesson again. Uh, but someone that is interesting and authentic in themselves and different uh, in the same way that Kevin is in, in many ways. Um, pretty, pretty much that, I would say. Ashley, the last time you and I talked, we kept campaigning that we needed a love interest for Josie. And I understand you might have some news for us. Um, I might. I might. Josie might. Be betting a couple of eyelashes at Reggie Mitchell. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Anybody else on the panel getting any new loves? Or want to throw that out there right now to Roberto? <laughs> Sarah. Um, <coughs> Roberto? Um, Over here? <laughs> I, well, Cheryl Blossom really yep. had the. M I mean, obviously, with uh, Archie's dad on fighting for his life, that's a serious situation, but poor Cheryl, I mean, nobody's family went through a worse season one <laughs> than Cheryl. I mean, just, I, she's, she's, she's got a lot of healing to do. Are you, are you up for that, Madeline? Dude, the baby I, yeah. crying in the audience right now is like the perfect soundtrack to the For the Blossom <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be talking about the babies, don't you worry. Got it. I think when, when your father's a wig-wearing monster, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to find appropriate love interest. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the, that's the truth. Like uh, awesome. Let's check in with Betty and Jughead. They've had such a lovely evolution in season one together. We got those I love yous in the finale. Uh, what would you guys like to see from them in season two? <laughs> wow. Well, I think... Um, 
honestly, with Jughead kind of going to Southside and stepping into serpent territory, it's very scary for Betty. She doesn't want to lose her man and also doesn't want him to get into any danger. And I think it becomes a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet situation that she hopes has a happy ending. They both do. Um, I want to see Betty just ride or die, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like, on some hogs, Betty. just riding into the wilderness. There might be a pink leather jacket in the future. Yes! <laughs> I mean, her mama was a little bit of a serpent, so... Going on. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, I, I think the relationship is definitely going to be tested, especially through the, through the first real real narrative of, of, of the second season. Um, but it's one of those things where now more than ever, I mean, season one, the way that we've kind of talked about season one was very much the origin story for a lot of these characters. And now the way that the, the characters' lives are sort of progressing is really stressful. It, it's, it, it's dark. And, and the truth is, is that Jughead is one of those characters that really gets tested the most by by the world around him, and that puts Betty really in a position to, of of possible judgment, where she and her morality have to make the choice to either be there for this kid, or you know, call it quits for for the betterment of herself. So it's it's a, it's interesting. We'll see where to be like to step up and be a strong girlfriend, and I don't think she's really used to being in those kinds of serious relationships, like. Especially because they just started their relationship and all of a sudden she's like helping him go through something very traumatic. And, and I, I think we can tease that probably the sexiest scene in Riverdale's history is in episode oh, 101 yeah. and it's between Betty. I mean... <laughs> Quite steamy. It's very steamy. LOL. It's very steamy. Um, well, something that I think that is heating up is how amazing the Pussycats have been. <laughs> group. Uh, it's amazing. It's such a blessing to have the three of us. As you know, we aren't the exact replica of the comic book, Joseph and the Pussycats, but it's amazing to be able to showcase how talented. Joseph and the Pussycats are and bring to life. I loved the movie in 2001, and uh, you know, I know I'm sure you guys have probably all seen it, but it's, it's just it's amazing to be able to share with you our love for the group and yeah, each other. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like honestly such a journey of self love for all of us, even with just like wearing our natural hair and <laughs> like it's been so confirming and such a blessing because it's not all the time you get the opportunity to do that especially on TV, so we're really oh, grateful, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All this hair. It's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. What type of musical moments can we expect in season two? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we do something super iconic. Episode, is it 202? 202. 202, we are literally singing the dopest song ever. <laughs> I won't give it away, but you got, everybody knows it. Like, it's, it's a classic, so. <laughs> it's really good. Are you guys just like slipping notes like under the writer's room being like, I'd like to sing this song next? We just sing them on set all day, <laughs> 12 hours. <laughs> um, and Ashley, are we going to be seeing any more dynamics with Josie and her family? Because her mom is the mayor, she's quite powerful. Um, I'm really hoping so. I think we are, uh, specifically with Josie and her mom. Um, I'd, I'd like to see some more interaction with uh, Josie and her father. Because um, I think that plays a big part in who she is and who she's going to decide she wants to become. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm really hoping that there's more family interaction. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, we, uh, we all love Robin Gibbons, who plays Mayor McCoy and Josie's mom. I mean, she's, she's that. incredible. So we have, uh, we definitely have big, big stories planned for her and Josie, because they're, they're also going to be uh, tested this season. And uh, just real quick, Veronica, are you still rocking those pussycat ears in season two? I am. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm still a pussy cat. Yes. Yeah. Love to hear that. Um, <laughs> Madeline, you burned down Thornhill <laughs> in the season one finale. Girl, where do you live in? <laughs> Where's Nana Rose? 
that's a solid question, Paul. Um, all of which will be revealed in season two. <laughs> I do have a house somewhere. Sort of. Yeah, I know that. Ish. Well, in that teaser trailer, we saw a very chilling scene. What was it like playing that, and what can you tease about what Cheryl's gonna be going through with her Blossom family? Well, um, Cheryl gets colder and meaner in season two because of all the things that happened in season one. But she takes the reins back from her parents. Parent, just the one. Um, she, takes the reins back. she takes the reins back and she starts taking control of her life a lot more, which I think is going to be fun for her to do. She needs that. Well, uh, and we've got some babies on the way for the Cooper and Blossom families. I don't know, how do you guys think that Cheryl and Betty are going to be as aunt on the show? In season two. In season two, we, yeah. Well, they're cousins now, right? Is this that we're going to have to have babies on the set? <laughs> cool, <laughs> relax. <laughs> Look, I started I as a baby. I can tell you we're horrible. <laughs> I also started as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which, well, that actually leads me into my last question before we open it up to you guys in the fans, in the audience right now. Um, instead of the classic cliche that a lot of other teen shows have done in the past of pitting girls against each other, it's so nice to see that Riverdale has so many beautiful female friendships and they're genuine. What is it like for you guys to be able to have those relationships on TV and be able to show that to the girls out there? Episode 205, let me just say, is like a bit really big, like, girls sticking together. This Nick St. Clair guy, the ex-boyfriend that comes into town, he's, he does no really bad things. And it involves Veronica and Cheryl. And because of that, it, it brings all of the girls together to kind of, like, fight it. It's kind of in the same light as, as, as episode three in season one. It's something that Roberto and I talked about from the very beginning, which is that dynamic of girls fighting each other is just not interesting. It feels At all. very played out, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to us. <laughs> These are all, all the women on the show are very different, you know, but they all find a way to get along because that's what women in this world need to do. So, <laughs> and even Monica and Cheryl, who like obviously are always going head to head, they still find a way to support each other, which I think is. But you know, deep down, Cheryl just really wants to be a part of the gang. Like that's yeah, exactly. I think she does. Uh, we're gonna open it up to you guys in the audience right now. Um, I want to say it. I was wondering if the rest of the cast members had picked up any Kiwi slang. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh. Keen for feed. Legend. Yeah. Mint, mint. Keen for feed. Keen for feed. Legend. 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 That's no, a KJ. None of these people are gonna understand. <laughs> I don't want to encourage him, so no. I, I've had to change. I kind of, as soon as I started working with these guys, the first week was gnarly for me. I had to really cut down on the old New Zealand slang. You had to assimilate. Exactly. <laughs> what's Welcome your name and America. what's your question? Hi, I'm Grace. Um, oh, yeah. My question is uh, for everyone, and if there's any traits from another character that you like your character to have, what are they? Also, Cammy, you're my spirit animal, and Lily is daddy. <laughs> I just want to be as ripped as Archie. I think the joke of season two is just beefcake. <laughs> you have to make it to the gym first. Yeah, you have to cut down. Outspoken as Cheryl. I like Betty's kindness. Mm -hmm. Aww. Aww. I, I love Camilla's confidence. I feel like uh, Veronica is like super confident. I like that. I think Betty kind of channels some of Cheryl's inner demon. <laughs> or Jughead's ability to eat. I love a bit of Kevin's humor. Archie, Archie's not oh the funniest guy in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Casey, what do you like Kevin to have? Uh, Casey's perfect. <laughs> uh, I kind of, uh, I, I, you know, that's a good question. Is he, is he, is he? Uh, it's, it's really hard to answer that question. No, I, I think maybe a little bit of Cheryl's uh, confidence in who she is and <laughs> fearlessness to burn down houses. Yeah. How <laughs> uh, and, and then, did everybody answer it? Just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think I wouldn't mind a little, I wouldn't mind being a little dark. I wouldn't mind being like real dark. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph got some demons. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
What's your name? What's your question? Hi, I'm Paris, and I was wondering who's most like their character on the cast. Mm. <laughs> That's a hard one. I think, <laughs> I think we, we all carry some all traits. Kind of we all carry some traits. I don't know. I'm so not really Maybe I'm I'm so not The guy that plays Pop Tate is the nicest what? guy in the world. Oh my gosh, he is Pop Tate. Pop Tate is Pop Tate. I think KJ. I think KJ. He's I mean, just as boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> KJ is the furthest thing from Clearly, the Clearly, Madeline is going method here, so that's... <laughs> Actually, I am a pretty boring person, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, stop it. No, 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 no. KJ is a fearless leader, I think, of the show. And he's on set every day. He's always prepared. He's always encouraging. So always I think Archie ready. has that. Not to make it sentimental, wow, but cheers, man. Always I'll, ready. I'll throw that up for KJ. Cheers, bro. You always won. Buff. I also feel like our pussy cats are most like their characters because they're also wickedly talented. Yes. Uh, I'll say that again. Uh, and what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Lauren, and I was in. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and my question is. If you could be any other character besides yourself, who would you be and why? Mm. I would be Jughead because, like, burgers. All the time. <laughs> all the time. No, dude. No, dude. 16 burgers deep into three takes is not something you want. <laughs> that's exactly the what I, Yeah, that sounds like what I should want. Also, like, they're prop burgers. <laughs> Okay, season three is better, but season one was like some freeze-dried A&W crust. It was like the, the Krabby Patty, like the vegetarian patty that was like really gross. They're the chum bucket. Yeah. <laughs> but how are the milkshakes? Oh. So much better. In this good. season, they're actually way better. They're actual milkshakes. We have like real milkshakes. They were like yogurt. Those are Pedialyte or something. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> And sure. <laughs> uh, besides being Jughead, would anyone else want to step into anybody else's shoes? I would love to be Betty. I, I love Betty's vulnerability. I think it's beautiful. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and I think that's really fun to play, too. I think it'd be really fun to play Cheryl. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, I'm Gabby, and I was just wondering if any of the actors have read the original comics and if they took anything from those characters to put in their characters now. Of course. Yes, yes definitely, sure. Definitely. <laughs> My mama had a huge box of comics. She still has them, and she's had them since she was a teen, and I went nuts on them, so I still have them, and I... Yeah, I think um, a lot of us are big fans of them. Yeah, on the pilot, I like read so many comics, so it's like, oh, like they're probably gonna like copy the storylines, and then they did it. <laughs> Waste of reading, but I, I, I think, I think it would one, it would be really inappropriate not to read any of the comics yeah. Yeah, when absolutely. you play these characters. So that should be said. But also, we were given a tremendous package of research materials when we got the parts. I was not. I Me either. Did the research. I'm <laughs> still waiting. Right, and I'm still buying the comics. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we uh, the the good thing is is that Arch Arch has been around for seventy five years, which gives us as actors tremendous potential to dive in and, and cherry pick character traits that we want to fit into a show like this. So it, in in terms of being able to do research, we had the the, the huge benefit of having the largest source material that we could for these characters, which we've all used quite a bit, and mm -hmm. Roberto is the single biggest Archie right. fan <laughs> the Archie in the universe. Yeah. The best story. It, it's funny, every time we do a storyline in Riverdale and we're like, okay, well that was never done in the comic books, Cole or someone emails me a panel and it's literally, it, it's been yeah. done because there are hundreds of thousands of stories. Yeah. So even someone last year sent me a picture of like Archie kissing the old Miss Grundy in the comic books. <laughs> <laughs> We have time for one more fan question. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Johanna, and uh, first I wanted to start off by saying I'm repping the Southside Serpent. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And Somebody play the lever. <laughs> and I also made this jacket, just so you guys know. Uh, so my question is, is there any rituals that you guys do before you go on set? To like get into character. Yeah, to get into character. 
<clears throat> I sing to myself. I listen to Highway to the Danger Zone. <laughs> this gets you pumped up. Really for anything. I don't eat. For <laughs> That's <laughs> Gotta be hungry as hell when I walk in the pops. <laughs> I feel like putting on my red lipstick is ritual enough. Yeah. Lots of coffee. Yeah, lots of coffee, lots of tea. We have an amazing craft tea. There's always like fresh <laughs> ginger tea. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing is running lines to the makeup trailer with the other cast. Mm -hmm. That's really what gets me in it. And then we just keep doing it over and over again until it's like in our blood. Yeah, yeah. well for me, I put up that ponytail and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the there. And, it's just, and, and the headaches yeah, start. <laughs> She's I'm, not there. Putting on the crown is, is also one of those things where you, you put on the beanie and it's immediately a character. Yeah, it's funny how objects can do that. I, even when I'm not, it's not my take and I'm not on camera, I still ask to have my heels on because there's something about, I can't do Veronica and slippers, like that's yeah. just not gonna happen. I mean, in the same way that that Southside jacket make, makes you feel a certain power when you're walking up and asking the question, that, that's, that goes for all of our wardrobe. And anytime you slip into a character's skin and you have the, the specific piece of wardrobe, it allows you to channel that character mm -hmm. a lot more the effectively. Ears. I mm -hmm. never leave the character, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I am that All right, guys, we are almost out of time, unfortunately. I wish that we could be chatting with you guys all day. Um, real quick, though, if you can... Oh, do we... I think there's one more. Oh, okay. hey, what's your name? Oh, what's your question? Hi, my name is Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey. Um, so my question was, um, in season one, when Cheryl's underwater and Archie's still breaking through the ice, um, Cheryl sees Jason as a zombie. Is there going to be anything else in season two that's, like, supernatural like that? Roberta, good, good question. Good question, Charlie. That's a very, that's a very, very, very good question. <laughs> um, um, you know, I love horror stuff, and I love, I, I love, uh, uh, you know, dreams and jump scares and things like that. So we're always trying to figure out ways to, to put hints of that in Riverdale. Uh, uh, we have been talking about one very uh, uh, prominent supernatural character that exists in the Archie universe. Uh, 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 and, and, I'm going to cut you off right now. Just and that, that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, we actually are out of time right now.